Uh, welcome everyone. We will be starting in a few minutes. We're just waiting for a few more people to join. Just hold on. Yes, uh, welcome again, everyone, to School Synergy Workshop Series uh, 2022. I am uh, Ruchi Kumar. I have been hosting the School Synergy Workshop Series session for the last three years now, and we are restarting these sessions uh, this semester. Uh, this semester, I have a new colleague who is going to help me uh, in uh, managing and coordinating the uh, school synergy sessions. Uh, let me introduce you uh, to Avnish. Avnish, uh, why don't you share a few lines about yourself and then uh, about the session. Please go ahead. Yeah. So, hello, good evening everybody. I'm Avnish and uh, I work with Center of Excellence in Teacher Education as a research associate. I'll be helping uh, Ruchi in uh, conducting these sessions. And uh, so school synergy sessions are aimed at bringing uh, teacher education institutions and teachers and other stakeholders involved in education at one place. So in uh, progression with that, we will have today's session. And today's session is on games in mathematics classroom that will be uh, taken by Ruchi ma'am. So yes, we can start. Good number of people have joined, so thank you. Thank you, thank you, Avnish. Uh, so um, we have done this uh, these sessions, school synergy sessions for past three years, and the objective has been that you know uh, we need to build a bridge between teacher education. Uh, universities where teacher education is uh, taught as well as in the schools and the classrooms where teachers are teaching the students and therefore we have focused on the topics which you know are directly relevant to the classrooms can be directly implemented uh, last year we even tried that you know we had the second session in which we asked teachers to come up with their own ideas based on uh, you know uh, whatever session we had done it was um, a very lukewarm response, but uh, still whoever, uh, all the teachers that joined in the second session, they engaged in a very, very uh, thoughtful discussions. And I think that was very helpful to them. Although not in big numbers, but it was still a very uh, useful exercise. Uh, we are restarting again. And in this year, uh, what we have decided is to have themes. And the theme for uh, this year is safe space to make mistakes. Okay, so uh, let us also discuss, you know, why uh, we have kept uh, that uh, this uh, theme as, uh, uh, you know, for the this uh, year itself, the safe space to make mistakes. So what do you all think about this safe space to make mistakes? Let me share my screen.
yeah so the theme for this year is safe space to make mistakes and those who have attended um, our earlier sessions cool synergy sessions they know that these sessions are supposed to be very very interactive and uh, so we start this tradition again and uh, i'm going to ask you so can you describe a classroom environment that promotes a safe space to make mistakes for students and for teachers so you can talk about any of that like you if you if you want to describe an environment which is safe for student you can describe that if you want to describe for teachers a safe space you can describe you can type on the chat you can unmute you can raise your hand i'm going to wait for some time i know it takes time for people to think about it i would like to say yes kanika please go ahead yeah the type of interaction that would provide a safe space to make mistakes in a classroom would include open ended questions open ended questions okay that's uh, interesting yeah can you describe any uh, can you give an example of any open ended question uh, yes ma'am uh, yeah. for example uh, if i take the example of evs i can ask the students that what all did they observe on their journey to the school on that particular day the answer okay. would have ma many different questions and no answer would be right or wrong okay and what would be your objective in asking that question so that the students can develop their skills of observation and uh, also then okay. i can build on those answers for example i can ask them that uh, do you see did you see any sparrow this morning and then we can discuss that how uh, the population of the sparrows is decreasing with the time and then we can discuss how and why that's a that's a really good idea yeah thank you kanika would anyone else like to come in besides open ended question, uh, questions uh yeah may i ma'am yes swapnil yeah safe space to make mistakes maybe we can uh, wherein we can provide students or teachers to do some activities uh, uh, hands on activities or hands on learning practices wherein they can do mistakes and the instructor or the invigilator or whosoever is uh, uh, looking after the activities can help them whenever they are doing the mistakes so in that in the so uh, such places they can do mistakes and even though they can learn also all the aspects of uh, okay so of you feel learning. hands on hands on material is definitely needed for you know to create an environment as a safe space to make mistakes do you think it can it is possible even without an hands on material yes ma'am we, we nowadays uh, when, when when this covid has come we can use some yeah. simulation based tools ma'am like uh, when if we are particularly talking about mathematics then we can use places like geo uh, simulation tools like geogebra and mathijan yeah. mathijan this kind what of what about pen and paper Uh, if we just had pen and paper would it still would it still be a safe space yes yes we can say ma'am yes yes a few okay. uh, they can be done yes why not yes okay so what is it that makes that space safe uh, how I, i i feel that uh, they have the audience who are taking part in such things uh, feel safe because there is someone who can help them who can assist them whenever they are doing mistake or uh, they, they can be uh, uh, we, we can justify it or we can make it correct the, the person the invigilator can correct it later on okay so uh, see can... now we are right now in an uh, you know a uh, webinar and uh, we have we may not have known each other Uh, yes. at all right yes. and uh, for in order to make this a safe space for all of you to contribute right yes. to yes. to say your answer i have to you know uh, indicate that you know this is safe you can say whatever you like and i will not you know be judgmental or criticize it but i would take it and i would try to help you to elaborate on it a bit more yeah, so yeah. that is you know one of the ways in which i am creating a safe space for teachers here for student teachers to share their um, ideas right yes. and similarly in the classroom also the kind of interactions that the teacher is doing helps to create a safe space for students right yes. thank you swapnil for your idea yeah. Yeah. about the hands on uh, materials yeah. yes you. they can be because it allows exploration 
yes. allows a lot of exploration. It is, and uh, you know, but even then, you know, uh, whether the teacher is, what kind of instructions teachers are giving. If teacher is giving very strict instructions about to do certain things with the hands-on material, yes. then would it be a safe space no, or no, would no, it? It will not, man, not, not. It will not be. So yes, you yes. need to allow lots of exploration on yes, your yes. own to, yes. for it to be a safe space. Yes. We will delve on this a little bit more later. Okay. Yeah. But let us hear other people also. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Two of the responses are in chat about freedom to make mistakes. About? Sorry? Freedom, freedom to make mistakes. Freedom, freedom to make freedom mistakes. To make mistakes will contribute to safe spaces. Okay. Okay. Anything else? If there is uh, nothing else, it's okay. We will uh, play a few games and then let's see what are the ideas that we can come about uh, safe space to make mistakes itself. Uh, one more question I wanted to ask you, you know, why a safe space to make mistakes might be very important for teaching of mathematics. Why would it be very important for teaching mathematics? Yes, caution. As maths being an abstract uh, subject of abstract uh, concepts, you know, what students are thinking, that becomes very much important for a teacher to understand. Yeah. Because a lot of misconcepts are absorbed when teacher even teaching very nicely. So yes. the expression of student is very important. I think you have uh, hit the nail on the head. It's, it's, it's absolutely important for the teacher to understand what is going on in the student's mind. You know, most often what happens is when teacher is teaching, um, then a teacher feels that I have to explain everything very, very clearly. And if I have given a very clear explanation, I have explained the procedure, this is how you have to do it. And if the students make mistakes, then it is their problem. I have explained it clearly. But in the learning of mathematics, many researchers, what they have found is, you know, students tend to have their own conception. They make their own meaning about whatever has been taught in the classroom. And that unless the teacher understands what is the meaning that the student has made of that particular concept, it will not be possible for teacher to build on those meanings, to take them towards um, more, uh, you know, scientific concepts, more... Uh, concepts which are closer to the understanding of the discipline. Somebody has unmuted. Can you speak? Do you want to speak? I think it's Ramsri Achari. You want to speak, Ramsri? Uh, no, ma'am, by mistake. Okay, it's okay. Yeah. So uh, I was talking about the mathematics classroom. Yes. Um, the students think understanding student thinking is very important. Understanding misconception is important. And that is a part of very important uh, pedagogical content knowledge that the teachers need to develop. And another reason why it is important in mathematics is mathematics is perceived to be a very difficult uh, subject by many of the students, teachers in our society itself. Although, I mean, it's not really true that it is a very difficult subject. It requires understanding. Definitely, it requires understanding. But, you know, if the mathematics is taught in a manner that it does not support the de development of understanding, it becomes something to be feared. You know, if it becomes very straight jacketed, if it becomes uh, that you have to, you know, follow a very fixed procedure and you cannot uh, make methods of their own, you cannot make their own, your own solutions, you cannot have alternative solutions, then it becomes very rigid and it instills a fear among students. Also the assessment, the kind of assessment is done that also creates a fear of mathematics among students. And therefore, to make mathematics meaningful, to make mathematics interesting, it is important to create a safe space to make mistakes in mathematics class. Now let us move ahead. So one of the ways I am proposing to make safe space uh, for mathematics classroom is to play games, okay? And I want to know from all of you, if you have, if you're mathematics teachers and have you played 
games in your mathematics classroom. All those who have played games in their classrooms and our teachers, please raise your hands and we'll be able to count who all have played. Can you all please raise hand whoever has played games in their classrooms? Avnesh, may I request you to please tell me the count? Yes. Around 10, 12, only this much. Around 13 to 14. Yeah. So it's really very interesting. I, uh, would any of you, 13, 14 people who have raised your hands, would you like to share what kind of games you have played in your classrooms? Would any of you like to unmute and share what kind of games you have played in the classrooms? Mitali. Uh, yes, yeah. ma'am. Go ahead. Uh, uh, ma'am, uh, we have played games based on different topics like multiples and factors. Uh, then we play something known as maths relay. So, uh, Can you give me an example? Multiples and factors. What what you we, what the uh, student has played, to do? Uh, we play uh, math tic tac toe, ma'am, where the number all the multiples okay. are written, and then the two and some some numbers are written separately. They have to choose two numbers and uh, find out the multiple. So that if two players are playing against each other, so say I have if I have chosen seven and eight, fifty six is mine. Now hmm. say you are going second, so you can choose one of the numbers and you have to drop another number. So you drop seven and you choose six. So seven and six is forty two. So like okay. that, we have to make a tic tac toe based on uh, the multiples. So uh, the concept of multiples and factors come in because the person who is defending has to be very careful not to take the factors of the number which will make my tic tac toe. So, so Mitali, it is uh, actually you have a lot of background noise and it is not very clear. I uh, can I ask you to uh, you know uh, share on Telegram this idea. A little bit in elaboration. Ma'am, how so telegram? That, how will I share on telegram? Uh, just write it on a paper or something and take uh, take a photo and share it on telegram. But telegram, what? There is a group, ma'am? Or yeah, yeah, there is a group. Okay, I thought you were there in the school synergy uh, group. If you're not there, I'll share the link of the group and you can uh, come into the group and you can share your idea. But uh, sure. your idea sounds very interesting. Um, sure, it does involve uh, some sort of calculation and reasoning. Yes, and, uh, yes, let us hear about other uh, resources also. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Sure. Okay, thank you. I'm actually there is a background uh, sound from Shubhashri. Some Shubhashri. Uh, uh, I can mute the, mute that person. Uh, who, what is the name? S U B. Yes, ma'am. Shubhashri. Uh, I I can't see her right now. Subhashri. Okay. She's, yes, yes. I'll mute her. So you can add me as a co-host. I can. Do yes, yes. I, and you can do that. Sorry. Just give me a minute. Uh, would anyone else like to uh, share uh, the games that you are playing in the classrooms? Yes, ma'am. I'm Urmila. I would like to share because since I work with EY children mostly, so for them, numerals are very abstract. So for that, for anything we do in a concrete manner, we try to do it in a concrete manner uh, using various open-ended manipulatives, math manipulatives, like, you know, pavers, colored counters, blocks, unifix cubes, and uh, the wooden blocks in BD Somani that's actually really helped to understand the, you know, uh, to make the children understand the interrelationship between the shapes for example two triangles can make a square for example during the yeah. block building or you know like how to understand the spatial concepts and stuff like yes. that so this is a wonderful activity that you're saying but how can you make it into a game it is still not a game it's an activity yeah, so what, what we do in that way, we just play hopscotch sometimes with numbers okay. in terms of number recognition. And sometimes we place the number mats, for example, 1 to 20, uh, you know, with the dotted, with the dots also. So, mm -hmm. and we divide them into teams, for example. So various, I would say, uh, collaboration skills and interpersonal skills also comes because, you know, uh, for example, in a group, if there are six children, then six mm. of them, they need to tap on to the numbers one, you know, 
one after another, right? So if if one team member is just tapping, for example, number six twice, then that collaboration chain will break. So that mm -hmm. way, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, various skills can be incorporated, including, you know, maths and, you know, counting and everything. So yeah, that way we play different games, yes. We yeah. also play with, uh, you know, gross motor skills, for example, like bouncing the ball, you know, basketballs or throwing it something to the, you know, basket or something. And then we make tunnels, for example, for number bonds, for example, and from one tunnel, you are just, you know, uh, using some marbles and it is going down to a basket, another tunnel also, two from here, three from here, total altogether five. From the very basic kind of uh, concept, you know, initially while building. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. I can't see your name. Can you repeat your My name? My name please? is Urmila. Yeah. Urmila. Thank you so much, Urmila, for uh, sharing the kinds of uh, games and activities that you do in your classroom. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, would anyone else also would like to share? Anyone yes, else? Uh, I'm Kaushal yes. Yadav. Yes. Uh, I'm a teacher educator in teacher education college. Uh, so, you know, we have, uh, I have made my students prepare uh, many housey in mathematics okay. Okay. for the entire chapters. They have prepared houses and bingo. And uh, when they go for their practice teaching in the schools, they carry this and then they make students play over there. And it's an And what is the objective of this housey? Uh, they have numbers written on it, right? Yeah, the answers written on it. And okay, and the quiz the is there. Yeah. So we yeah. have made that permutation combination of 50 chits also. So, okay. I mean, the structure which I have prepared with them is mm -hmm. like they have to find out 40 or 50 questions from the chapter and mm -hmm. they will narrate. Each student is given the chit and the way we play Housey with Tambola with our routine games, they play like this for the entire chapter. And it's a very, very exciting thing for students of our Ahmedabad city, as well as bingo also, we have prepared for many chapters. We have yes. prepared, I think, housing for the entire textbooks also. So that is the exercise which I make them do. And they are all tested in our schools also. And I have done a very nice research also that gamification in mathematics education and that gave a very good response that students were so excited in the class and every year they do this practice and then they enjoy a lot. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Kaushal, uh, for sharing this. Uh, I will. Uh, the what I want to share here is a little bit different from the quiz. You know, the mostly the games are used for assessment, right? Yes. Uh, so the, the concept has already been taught, and you know, you want to see if the students have learned it or not, and then as a formative assessment, you create some sort of a quiz. It could be housey, it could be bingo, it could be, it, it, it can be dividing the class into different groups and just asking the quiz itself. So these are uh, a sort of games that we have designed for assessment, for assessing whether, whether the concept has been understood or not. How we can develop, I want to ask you a question. How can we play games that can help in stu uh, developing students' mathematical reasoning and thinking? how we can have certain games which are not just assessing the concept, but are also helping them to learn the concept, okay? By engaging them in a mathematical activity. So the questions that be, uh, might be there in the textbook and if we are asking the answers, then it, uh, it is a way of uh, checking whether you know the answer or not. But what I'm asking is the kind of games that help you to develop the mathematical understanding itself. So this is what I want to uh, focus on today. I know that the, the other kind have been created and are very much prevalent. So can you think of any games from your childhood that has learned, uh, that has helped you to learn the mathematics itself? Learn mathematics, not just assess it. I think we are all familiar uh, with uh, certain games. It's played in. Now we can. They can play business. House. Yes. They can play business. Yes. Okay. So tell me now, what is the mathematics that they are learning? The, when they, they will are learn business? profit and loss and all these things from there. There's profit and loss. What else? Uh, then uh, addition, subtraction. 
percentage addition uh, subtraction percentage and also they they learn about different denominations how different denominations of currency Sir. can be combined uh -huh. together to uh, uh -huh. give the yes, a certain yes. amount yes subhash uh -huh. snake and ladder has been written twice yes snake and ladder is almost everyone's house in india yes. right well, how does that help us what what is the mathematical concept that one learns by playing snakes and ladder if greater you have ever numbers. played that with young children you would know greater number smaller number yes Cal calculations also there is a grid you know there is a 100 number grid there and you know uh, when we move certain um, uh, our goti jisko bolte hain english mein what do we call that Dice. Uh, dice. Dice. Counters. dice counters and dice counters, counters yes counters so when we move our counters and we have to move in a move it in a certain way we need to know you know ki iske baad ye kahan pe aayega kai bacche kya hai they they would uh, many students they tend to add one more number while counting they will count one extra because unko counting ka ye nahi pata ki when they are uh, if they are on 5 and they get 6 so whether they should start counting from 5 itself or they should start counting from 6 itself so they also understand how to count you know and what does it mean to add and they because this is in a sort of a, a visual display of 100 numbers they can also understand how the numbers above and below are related to the number written there okay so those kind of understanding number pattern understanding can also develop of course addition and subtraction uh, the you know students find it very difficult to go over tens when they are adding or subtracting like uh, if if you are on 18 and then you uh, have to add 5 uh, then you have to go over 20 right so that 18 uh, then you have to count 19 20 21 22 23 20, like that so that even they are doing it in snakes and ladder this going over tens number becomes sort of more e easier for the students to understand so they, these are the games which are very much there in our uh, daily life and they have helped the students to understand uh, so many um, uh, mathematical concepts at primary level but now let us see uh, some game that i want to introduce you uh, which are about uh, geometry okay so i am going to introduce you about uh, uh, the clicks oer game that um, uh, we have developed for geometry it's a module we have developed which is called geometric reasoning let me show you the website itself yeah so abnish you can uh, if is it possible for you to put the okay I, i only will put it in the chat so i'm putting the link in the chat also for this website so this is our clicks oer website okay and here we have several modules that we have developed oer means open educational resources and you are free to use this without giving any money uh, to anyone and you can even Uh, change it uh, according to your own needs when you are doing it with students so here we have geometric reasoning part 1 geometric reasoning part 2 proportional reasoning and we also have uh, one more on uh, linear equations in one variable it is on the next page so right now i wanted to show you this geometric reasoning module and within that we have two uh, different games but they are also related and i want you to see how they are related to each other so one is the police squad game and another is this one so we are going to play this game first okay so suppose in um, middle school mathematics class you want uh, to teach them certain uh, shapes and their properties okay so in this game what you have to do is uh, out of these 10 shapes i have selected one shape and is it is there in my mind okay now you have to frame a question in such a manner 
that I will respond to that question in form of a yes or no. And based on my response of yes and no, you have to eliminate certain shapes from the game and there will be certain shapes which will be retained. And the one who will be able to find the answer, find the question, I mean, one who, who articulates a question that leads us to the answer wins, okay? So are you ready to play this game with me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so please go ahead and frame the question for me. So I will does respond it, in yes or no. Does it have three sides? No. So when I respond no, what are the shapes that you can eliminate? One and three. Okay. Next question, please. Are all sides equal? No. Which ones can so you el eliminate now? Eight. 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 So think uh, a bit more uh, logically. You can uh, frame questions that can help you to eliminate more than one shape, right? Is it a regular shape? Is it a regular shape? By regular, do you mean, uh, can you explain what do you mean by regular? Mm. Like all, all sides, sides equal. All sides equal and all angles equal. Just now, all, all sides, all sides equal. equal. But then uh, that's the question Ma which has already, been already, already asked. Already, already, and you are yes. wasting the question by asking uh, that again, right? Does, does the shape have four sides? Does the shape has four sides? Yes. Okay, now which ones are eliminated? Two. One, One three. two, three. No, two also has Nine, four sides. Ten. So, two ten. has four sides. Two Please be more sides. careful. That is why yes, the shape right. has been created in this way yes. to create confusion. So remember this, okay? That, you know, these confusing shapes might be very good for learning. Yes, you made a mistake here. But that mistake is also helping you to learn that there, there are four, it looks, it may, you know, it may make you feel that there are not, uh, uh, four sides are not there, but it does have four sides if you look carefully, okay? Yeah. Does Ask it have a reflex plus. angle? And then only two, four, five, six, seven remain. So the question which was asked, uh, you know, by that person, I, sorry, I don't know the name, that does it have four sides? It led to elimination of so many shapes. So that is a very good and efficient question, okay? Now I'm going to respond to uh, the question that does it have reflex angle? So the answer is no. And that shape, so which shape has been eliminated? Second one. Only the second one. Second right? one. Does the shape have a right angle? No, only the only the one pair of it has only one pair parallel sides. I I am sorry. The question was asked was does it have um, only uh, one pair as parallel sides? Only one pair as parallel sides. No. Which one is eliminated now? Six. 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 Which ones are left now? Four, five, five. four and five. Seven. Four, five, and seven. Okay. Um, are all angles right angles of the paper? No. Four is eliminated. Then, so then opposite sides are parallel and equal. So yes. Five, five, five and six. Five. 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 It is five. Opposite sides are parallel and equal. Yes. So it is? Five. 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 So five. whoever asked that question, opposite That's sides right. are parallel and equal, that the is angle. the that person is the winner okay so now this is the first time you have played the games and you have made certain questions which through which one uh, sometimes one shape were eliminated sometimes more than one shape so, so let us now play this game again okay anyone can uh, be the thinker and they can respond in yes and no and we all can again ask the questions priyanka can i ask you to mute please Priyanka Jain, can you please mute? So who yes, will uh, volunteer to be the thinker? Who will select the shape and respond to the answers? Maybe I will do it again 
uh, this time. But let us see that if we are able to find the shape much more quickly than the earlier time. Okay. Let us see if uh, just playing it once. How does that help us to um, you know play the second time? Okay. So I have again uh, selected a shape in my mind. Now again, you have to ask me questions quick. Does it have four sides? Is it a four-sided figure? So I'm going to respond to does it have four sides? And the answer again is yes. Are the opposite sides same? Are the opposite sides same? Okay. No. So it's a trapezium six. Okay, you they have you and have come angles, at, right angles. You have already already the trapezium has already been uh, arrived at. So how did you guess the yes. trapezium? Please can you explain? Because it has only one. Uh, it, it doesn't have the opposite uh, sides equal. Yes. And uh, but so it was just a guess, but it was not based on the questions that you know the not based on the properties. Whereas earlier the questions so that we good. were making was uh, based on the properties itself. So it was a very lucky guess. Yes. So this kind of thing may also happen. Okay. So uh, what you observe that in the earlier chance were the questions that we were making. All the questions. What does it mean? You know, what does the student has to think about when framing a question? The student has to notice the properties. Okay, and why that is important in teaching of mathematics is because students tend to look at the shapes in a very holistic manner. You know, the second shape, it looks like an angle. So they may just, they may not even notice that it has got four sides. Okay, and uh, uh, they may not uh, uh, focus on the properties of the shapes itself. And therefore, this kind of game might be very useful to help them focus on the properties and um, they may say that is it a rectangle right uh, that kind of question they may ask and uh, uh, then it might be very interesting for us to also uh, ask uh, you know the rectangle uh, the eight is also a rectangle because it's a square but it is also a rectangle so the, those kind of discussions can be done now let me show you something uh, similar to this. So this is a game which can be played just on a board, right? You can draw these different shapes on the board and you can play it in the classroom in a in-person manner, face-to-face -face manner. Now let me show you a digital game that we have created. It is called as uh, Pulley Squad. And there also we, what we have tried is to make students focus on the properties of the shapes itself. I'm going to turn the music off. You can also see this game. I'm going to post the link here. Okay. So this game has a story also, the background story. So there is this in 2040, a spaceship is headed towards Earth. It makes a soft landing, but it has been spotted and police arise to check its visitor. And as the police gets closer, the hatch of the spaceship opens and a strange being stepped out. One of them seems to be their leader and they come in peace. So the police takes the leader of the aliens to the council of elders. Who are you? Greetings to the council. My name is Joe and I speak for all those who have landed on your earth. And what do you want? We are Judex and we come from Planus, a planet far from Earth. Planus is ruled by Rahaka. Rahaka is cruel. He ill-treated us. Where are we going, Geo? Earth. So we fled from Planus. Now we wish to live on Earth, where we hope to live with dignity. So this is a story of an alien who, who have come to Earth. What can Judex offer Earth in return, Geo? We will, make, we will work with you to make Earth a happier place. 
how did you escape from planus rahaka had a spaceship and we built it uh, we built it for him some of us knew how to fly it rahaka kept it locked with a secret code and one night we sneaked out of the board uh, uh, sneaked out and boarded the spaceship and we cracked the code with a little bit of reasoning so uh, to the one of the elders they, uh, they felt that this is something uh, really clever uh, and uh, they can use uh, they can ask them to do some reasoning based work and so they asked geo to assist the police squad so and he says it will be an order so they start uh, living together and uh, they, uh, to them all the humans look alike and uh, to humans all the judex look alike but judex actually had a very distinguishing features what they had on their chest was uh, the shape of different types of quadrilaterals and these are the markers on the chest and th this is how they could be differentiated now uh, some of the judex were captured in uh, some uh, creative when they were creating trouble and uh, geo feels that they should uh, he should be able to help them because uh, not all of them should suffer just because some of them have done something so police had uh, rounded up a lot of judex and put them in the prison itself now if uh, if geo is supposed to help the police then how can he help he can use his reasoning so this is a crystal case here you can see the yeah so you can see different shapes here these are the markers of the aliens on their chest you can see these are all four in the prison okay so now what uh, geo has to do is to uh, he will get certain clues from the computer who has uh, seen the robbery taking place and uh, based on the clue the geo has to select whom he can release you know the innocent should not remain in the jail itself so whom he can release and whom is supposed to be a culprit and kept in the jail so he has certain tools for uh, uh, deciding which uh, clue fits there is an equal side tool there is a parallel line tool let me show you and you can you can do like this like this okay and also there is a right angle tool which can also be moved like this and the equal side tools actually tells you if there are any equal sides there so right now it's not applicable so it's not showing okay yeah so now let us go for the clue and you can see here there are certain points that you may get or you may lose certain points if you give the wrong answer so the culprit has three equal pairs of sides the culprit has three equal pairs of sides based on this clue can you determine which one is innocent can you determine which one is innocent second one yeah the second one why you have to explain why because because it has one, two, three, four pair of equal sides. Second one. Yeah. So second one has more than three, uh, three. equal pairs of sides. Yes. Huh. yes. So it is innocent and therefore it can be released. released. So we have released it. Okay. Now let us go for the next clue. Clue. The culprit has less than six straight sides. The culprit has less than six straight sides. Which third. one can be released? Third, third, third. Okay. Third. Third. So let us release the third one. Okay. Third one. Okay. We have released the third one. Now let us go for the clue again. The culprit has more than one equal pairs of sides. So first will Fourth be released. One. Third one. One. one pair of equal sides. Four is first. one. First one. one. First one or fourth one? There seems to be a doubt. First, can you give first one, 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 one,
fourth one fourth one first first one can be released those who are saying fourth first one, one can be released can you explain why then i will go for because the fourth it one. because it has uh, only one pair of equal sides first one has only one pair of equal sides okay uh then uh, the who is saying the fourth one can they explain it has more uh, than one equal pair of sides it has more ma'am. than one equal pair of equal sides of sides so fourth one is having more than one equal pair of sides oh so side listen like if if it is more than one, one pair of equal sides then it is the culprit right yes. and whom do we yes. have to release first we have one to one release the side. innocent so which one is the okay. innocent First one. First, first one. The first one is the innocent. So we will release the innocent, and the, in this way, we have kept this person in the jail itself. They are all in the jail right now. We have released the innocent. Okay, and now yes. we will say done. So we get a feedback. Fabulous work, and you caught the culprit, right? Yeah, and it is now. It is saying match, and it also describes the. properties based on which this shape was selected this shape, this culprit was caught so how what mathematics is this game helping you to learn uh, shapes about shapes properties of shapes again the properties of shapes Shape. and uh, just like you had to create a question uh in the earlier one to you know ask uh, uh, the ask me about the shape here you have to identify the shape based on the sentence which is given so we have uh, considered this as the first level of the game in which they have to identify the shape corresponding to the statement because making the statement itself is very very difficult for the students so identifying the shape is slightly easier based on the properties so this is the first level and if you had seen the police squad game uh Let me show you. Yeah. Mitali is raising her hand since long. Yes, Mitali, please go. Uh, no, no, ma'am. I think I uh, forgot to uh, lower it down. it down. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. So let me show you. This was just the first level. I'll show you the second level now. Yeah. I'm going to skip the story now. yeah so this is the second level okay again uh, they have been caught in some uh, judics have been caught in uh, stealing some water and it has been uh, seen by a robot which can respond only in form of yes and no does it sound familiar the robot can respond in yes or no and you have to frame yes. a question for the robot to respond in yes or no does it sound familiar yes ma'am like this, we played the first game yes the first, it's very sim uh, uh, similar to the first game itself except that yes. now it is in a game format it, it looks like a video game but um, it is going to engage in the same kind of thinking so how what we are doing here is we have different clues here okay so these the here the first one is at least less than more than exactly all no what are these called these are all called qualifiers and students find it very difficult to understand this so this uh, uh, creates uh, additional difficulty for them when they are framing the definitions and they are framing the sentences for uh, the properties itself right no more than exactly all less than then this the second one is the numbers the third one is the property whether it is equal parallel right reflect obtuse acute and the last one is whether it is side angle or the pair of sides okay so you can see instead of starting with a definition itself we are helping students to construct the properties of different shapes and in that process to construct uh, sort of their own definitions and this game allows students to do that you can also do the same thing you can just make different kinds of cards if you are doing it hands on in the classroom you can make different kinds of cards and you can ask students to select different cards from different heaps to make this kind of a question to assist them in making this kind of a question 
Okay. So can you help me make the first question for the robot? Does the shape have exactly four sides? Okay. So exactly, exactly four. I'm going to select so four and then equal sides, you mean? Or you need you it. You need it. Okay. One. If you don't mean equal, then you will leave that and Two right just angles. say sides. Okay. Two right Let's, angles. Uh, we will come to that. Let us first ask this exactly four sides. So we are going to ask. So the robot responds as no. Can we eliminate any shape on the basis of this? Yeah, the first, fourth, and the sixth. Everyone agrees? The first, fourth, and the sixth. Oh, first, not first, the fourth, fourth and, and the sixth. sixth. Only. Does everyone agree? Does the culprit have yes. exactly four sides? Do you see here four sides? Can you please look at it again? No, they are five. One, no, two, three, four, five. So there are five. Four and six. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay. So no. So the, if the culprit does not have exactly four straight right, means these two are innocent and they can be released. Released. Okay. So we have released them. Now, uh, who will help me to form the second question? Will someone try? At equal angles. of parallel lines. Sorry, can you repeat? More than one pair of parallel lines. Okay, more than one pair of parallel lines. More than one. Then uh, parallel pair of sides. Okay, I'm going to ask this. The answer is no. Based on this, can you release someone? Third one. Number yes, three. Third no. one. Third one. Everyone agrees? I'm not going to tell you right or not. Okay? Yeah. So we have released this. Now, the third question, who will help me to create? Does now, these three are like... Sides? Does it have five sides? Okay. Do you mean exactly? See, you didn't use the qualifier. Exactly five. We will not select anything here. And sites. Okay. Yes. Yes. So we can release so, the triangle, second one. Sorry? We can release the uh, second one, triangle. Okay. We'll release the second one. Okay. Now, now what question can we ask? What about this one? One, yeah, a two, pair of three, a four, pair five. of parallel okay. lines. But does, does, does it have right angle? Does it have a pair of parallel lines? Does it have a pair of parallel lines or does it have right angle? Okay. Right angle. With, yeah. Okay, right I will angle. go for the right angle. What should I use here? At least less than, more than, exactly all. At least. At we least, can also use at least because the other one at least right at least one at right least angle two at least, least one two right angles exactly two right angles yeah if we have to say exactly. i mean at it should be either exactly sides. two right angles or a, at least one right angle if 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 we both use i mean we can use both the sentences and both the yes. sentences yes. would be appropriate. So there can be more than one way of arriving at a solution. There can be multiple ways of solution also. And you need to acknowledge mm -hmm. that in the classroom. Okay. And each one can select the one right. that they feel is correct. At least one right angle. Okay. Yes. Yes. So which one is the culprit? The first, the first one is the culprit. The first one is so culprit. So which one would we, we release? Can, we can release fifth one. Fifth one. You can release the fifth one. Yeah. Great job. So it is showing us the match and the tokens that we have got 200 into 1 and 40 into 5. So they can even check their scores. 
and they have they can even check the properties and uh, they can even go to this uh, vocabulary click on right angle they can see so which one is a right angle and this one is not a right angle okay so they can even see that they can even click on this parallel lines and see which ones are parallel and which ones are not so this is a kind of uh, open educational resource that we have built okay now i'm going to stop share for a moment and i'm going to ask all of you to you know just share in what way do you feel that this experience of both the games was um, do you think it was a safe space if so why and if not then why all of you can share uh, either on the chat or by unmuting Yes, ma'am. It was safe. Do you space. think it was a safe space? Mm -hmm. Safe space. If yes, so, yes, why? And if not, then why? Yes, ma'am. It was. Why? You have to explain why. Ma'am, because first of all, it was not taught to them. I mean, we were not teachers, and even we, we were not teachers and teaching them something. Yeah. They were arriving at the solution. So, and they had multiple chances of arriving at the solution. So, they were making if, even if they were making mistakes. And I mean, even if we were making mistakes, we had another chance to get to the solution. So yeah. that that made it a little bit more uh, flexible. Hmm. Okay, uh, that's right. Uh, would anyone else like to uh, say something? Urmila is saying it is safe because it is interactive. Chat. Sorry, I don't, didn't get that. It is safe because it is interactive. So. Urmila is saying that in chat. Okay. We have a couple of more responses in chat. Yes, it is. It is safe, safe because it is interactive. Just because, just because it is interactive, I don't think it can become safe. I tell no, you, children without any fear, they can just answer. There hmm. is no fear. They can answer whatever there is coming in their mind. They can openly guess. So they are, they are do, thinking at the same time. They are doing it without any fear. That is the main thing that whether teacher will scold them or not, whether they're correct or incorrect, these things, it's a, it's a kind of guess, but they're actually learning in that way. It will be a safe to them. Yeah. I think, yes, I agree with you. Uh, would anyone else like to uh, share? Can you, uh, Avnish, can you please read out uh, the comments also? Yeah, yeah. So, Jasneet is saying uh, scope for self-correction. No fear to make mistakes can be... I think that is the can... most important uh, criteria that one has to remember. That there is a scope for self-correction. Yeah. And there yeah. is a scope for inductive learning. That's what humanity... Can you please elaborate? What does it mean, uh, inductive learning? Uh, it is uh, actually from examples we are going to the rules or and principles can you please repeat i'm having uh, there is a i think there is a problem in my connection I have, uh, what i have thought that uh, through examples we are mm -hmm. going to the, straight to the rules and principles Okay, I don't think we are going towards the rules, but through yes. examples, we are developing an understanding of the properties of the shapes. So yes, yes in that sense, it, uh, it is inductive. And, and I, as I said that there should be a confusing example also, there should be examples which are challenging and difficult. So that can help you in uh, developing a more deeper understanding and more deeper reasoning. So yes, okay. inductive learning, definitely. Namrita has said it, it is safe space as it will help the child to learn different properties related to shapes and mm -hmm. can learn to frame questions as well. Oh, I think that's really nice. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, Anyone Swati else? Saying, uh, Swati is saying students will not have an anxiety to fail in maths because yes. of games. See, and, that, uh, is, uh, that is uh, one of the uh, things I was really hoping that you all will be able to capture. Uh, yeah. So when you, uh, you know, play games in the classroom, especially the games, uh, 
this is uh, uh, this is something which is very very useful you know in a game what happens when you generally play game what happens you know you win or you lose and it is okay if you lose all that you have to do is to start over, all over again and in mathematics also uh, when you are playing game it is okay to lose if you lose one time if you make a mistake one time it is okay you can always try again and when we uh, you know uh, use this game with the students and this game has been actually this geometric reasoning module has been tried out in several uh, states within india uh, telangana chatisgarh rajasthan mizoram and it is uh, spreading to more and more states more states are adopting this uh, open educational resources uh, many teachers from other states have also adopted it we are we have even tried this uh, geometric reasoning module internationally in uh, other countries like bhutan tanzania and nigeria and uh, we would encourage you to try out the ideas in this module in different ways if you don't have a computer i mean don't think that it has to this module is supposed to be used only in a form of a computer with the students you can ask the students to do practice on the computer and you can play the game that we i played with you in the classroom on the blackboard and you can see what kind of understanding they are developing or you can just play that game in the classroom you can give them a sheet you can ask them to play this group uh, play this game in groups itself and uh, you can ask them to play this again and again and over the period of time you will see that their vocabulary for using qualifiers uh, for using uh, correct terms uh, for angles for sides uh, for describing the shapes for coming to uh, for understanding the definition itself it improves over a period of time so uh, i really would urge you to try and explore uh, you know consider this as a safe space for you to try and explore the geometric reasoning module in your own way and to share uh, your ideas and experiences uh, in the school synergy group right so i am going to uh, yeah. put in that it has lot of scope for exploring variability in defining shapes sharing about shapes being seen analyzing elimination and problem solving skills are also being developed okay thank you thank you so much so i am going i am sharing a, a link for a document um, so all these points that you have made about you know the games in mathematics classroom can i please request all of you to go on that document and to you know write down your comments about this uh, uh, session about what you have learned about the use of games in mathematics classroom how it can help the students to, uh, 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 to how it can help to create a safe space for students how exploring geometric reasoning module can be a safe space for teachers to explore new ideas and um, you know thoughts itself so it is my a uh, humble request to go on that link and to write down your comment if you want you can leave your name if you don't want it is okay not to leave your name it can be anonymous but everyone can just get on there and just write their name uh, let me share uh, the screen the, the docs need access so uh, you can uh, make it for i think i have given access just let me see oh anyone with the link is a viewer just wait i'll make it editor yeah. and i'll copy the link again and share it on the chat try now try it now yeah i think people will be able to write now yes please don't annotate rajesh ranjan yeah you have to type uh, there i think people are trying to subhashree you are trying to uh, write using mobile i think just type
and please take uh, you know press enter and go down press enter because everyone all of you are on the same writing on the same space and therefore things are getting problematic yeah just see that where you are writing nobody else's cursor is visible okay so we are trying this in school synergy for the first time writing on a google doc together yeah just press enter and type and see that nobody else uh, else's cursor is visible there otherwise they will write over you i'll stop sharing so i hope that you will be able to give your comments there about uh, see uh, we were using feedback form earlier but you know generally people give very positive feedback what we really want from uh, people who are attending school synergy workshop series is you know their conceptions their ideas what have you understood from today's session about uh, safe space to make mistakes about using games in the mathematics classroom what kind of ideas have been triggered you know so just don't do you know that it was very useful it was uh, a very interesting uh, session uh, that is okay to hear but we really want to know you know the ideas what is the the new idea that you have got from this session and what is the new idea that you are going to try out in the classroom we are really really interested in that okay in case you are not able to type on the google uh, form itself uh, the google doc itself i request you all to share it on the uh, telegram group let me share the link of the telegram group also invite link in case people i had already shared that in the in the chat yeah can you share it again yeah yeah in case you are not able to type uh, type it on the google doc you can give your comments on the telegram group itself and we can continue the discussion on the telegram group in fact i had uh, two more games to show and uh, since we uh, had a very interactive session i we, i didn't get time to show that but in the next week uh, in the face to face session at uh, center of excellence in teacher education at tata institute of social sciences mumbai uh, i'm going to show the other two hands on games also okay so if there are any of the teachers who have joined from mumbai and who want to attend this session in a face to face manner please join us next week on friday at 4 pm center of excellence at teacher education and the poster has been shared already on the group and we have uh, shared the uh, registration details also you have to register to come to uh, the uh, session itself we will send the invites to the people who have registered so there are only limited seats we cannot accommodate more than 40 people at the center so it would be good if you register soon okay if there are any further comments that people want to make they can do so now or we'll end the session recording of the offline sessions we are planning not to make recording of the offline session uh, because the online sessions recording is already uh, you know uh, uploaded on youtube and released on the youtube school synergy channel uh, we are planning not to have the uh, offline sessions recording for now and uh, until and unless we get a proper hybrid setup uh, in our center once we get the hybrid setup in our center we will uh, start uh, uploading the recordings of offline sessions also in person session also offline scene sounds very technical in person is better yeah okay any further comments anything you want to say anybody wants to say any idea that they got about creating safe space for mathematics classroom for their own mathematics classroom i think there are lots of uh, there on the chat can you read it out uh, avnish
yes they can be adopted to any subject mamta and i wish that you uh, adopt these kind of activities in lots of other areas link for registration next week is there on the uh, school synergy teachers forum uh, telegram group we will also share it on the social media but uh, since there are only 40 seats available if the uh, if the 40 registrations have already happened we will not share it more ma'am uh, can you please so uh, avnish yes can you speak again uh, ma'am uh, can you please elaborate more about safe place as in uh, how can it be defined it exactly safe space right yeah yes okay so safe space means you know you are uh, you do not have any fear that if you will take make a mistake that you will be scolded for it and you will be judged that you know you tumhe itna bhi mathematics nahi aata hai tumhe ye karna nahi aata hai so creating an environment when it is safe to explore safe to make uh, explore means to try out different ways of solving a problem uh, safe to uh, make mistakes and to try it out again and again no matter how many times you want to try it and nobody will stop you uh, safe in the sense that you know uh, it uh, there are several different uh, alternative methods to find the answer or alternative ways to find an answer so even in this uh, game that we were playing you know it is uh, there is not single question which is correct the same you can even ask a question that is there any one right angle or you can even ask a question that are there exactly two right angles present in the culprit okay both the questions are correct and similarly in arithmetic also you can create questions which open ended questions which are you know uh, where multiple types of responses could be correct not only multiple answers but a multiple ways of solution can be correct so we will explore more such ways in the sessions going ahead uh, we hope and uh, we will give you an example of uh, these kinds of uh, ways also i hope that helps uh, am i audible ma'am right? uh, am i audible yes yes you yes, are can you please uh, resend the telegram group link once again yes avnish have you shared or should i share I'll share it. I'll share. Thank you. Thank you. Ruchi, I have done that. You have done that. I'm also sharing the uh, YouTube channel link. where all the previous uh, sessions uh are available for you to watch this is the youtube play playlist of school synergy this session will also be recorded and released on youtube and i hope you are okay with that yeah so i think that's all for today we will end the session uh, today and we will meet you uh, again uh, in two weeks from now the online session is scheduled for two weeks from now i think and uh, we for the next two weeks we have offline sessions at the center please do not feel uh, left out uh, you know the concept that i will be discussing in the uh, in person session would be the same it would be the games in the mathematics classroom and safe space to make mistakes it will just be more in an in person manner so you are not really left out we are going to repeat the sessions which are going to be there in the uh, in person mode okay okay then bye see you thank you ma'am thank you so much thank you everyone for